An Introduction to Ceramic Shell Casting For the new investment caster, Ransom and Randolph recommends using suspended slurry materials. These pre-mixed chemically suspended and ready-to-use ceramic shell slurries are designed to simplify slurry makeup and maintenance and eliminate continuous slurry mixing, all while offering proven casting performance. For non-ferrous metal casting, suspended slurry FS material is recommended for both the primary and backup coats. For ferrous metals, suspended slurry ZR material is recommended for primary coats. For backup coats, use suspended slurry FS material. Preparing the slurry. Simply open and remix the suspended slurry material prior to use to ensure a uniform blend of material. Remixing time will vary with the size of the slurry but should only take minutes. Small slurries may be remixed by hand, while larger slurries may require a propeller mixer. Remix the suspended slurry material until it is blended and the mixture is creamy in appearance. RNR recommends running a slurry viscosity test before each use. Viscosity can be measured using a viscosity cup and one of two methods. Through the hole and one inch below. Wet a clean dry cup by immersing it into the slurry and emptying the cup. Reinsert and pull the cup straight up out of the slurry and start a timer. Looking down into the cup, stop the timer immediately when there is an opening in the hole of the cup. Record the results. Wet a clean dry cup by immersing it into the slurry and emptying the cup. Reinsert and pull the cup straight up out of the slurry and start a timer. Watching from the side of the cup, stop the timer immediately when the stream of slurry breaks about one inch from the bottom of the cup. Record the results. Results will vary based upon the testing method used. Dipping the pattern. Prior to dipping, please note that patterns must be clean and free from silicones or other contaminants. It is not usually necessary to use a pre-wet on the pattern. However, if a pre-wet is needed, use deionized water only. If using a pre-wet, be sure to drain the pattern before dipping into the slurry. Immerse the clean pattern in the suspended slurry material. Be sure to completely cover the entire pattern in slurry and rotate several times while still immersed. Remove the pattern from the slurry and drain until a uniform coat is formed with minimal dripping. Your pattern is now ready to apply stucco sand. For non-ferrous metal casting, a fine fused silica sand should be used on the primary coat. We recommend Rancosil A. For backup coats, use a coarser sand. We recommend Rancosil B. For ferrous metals, a fine zircon sand should be used on the primary coat. Use a coarser sand for backup coats. We recommend Rancosil B. Stucco sand is normally applied using one of the following methods. Rainfall sander, fluidized bed, or cat box. Using a rainfall sander, sift or sprinkle sand over the freshly dipped and drained pattern. With a fluidized bed, compressed air passes through a porous stone or plate, evenly distributing air through a bed of sand, allowing for immersion of the pattern or mold. Using the cat box method, place the freshly dipped and drained mold on an open bed of sand and flip sand by hand onto the mold. Remove excess stucco and allow the mold to dry. Drying time will vary depending on part geometry, shell room environment and airflow. Suspend a slurry materials contain a color indicator, taking the guesswork out of shell drying. Shells are dry when the color changes from greenish yellow to orange. Once shells are dry, repeat the dipping sequence as needed to build a sufficiently thick shell. After you're finished dipping shells, be sure to replace the slurry tank lid to prevent evaporation. Slurry Control Conducting regular testing is essential to best understand the properties of your slurry. To maintain suspended slurry materials, R&R &R recommends running a slurry viscosity test before each use and a total solids test weekly. Viscosity testing is required to ensure sufficient water is present in the slurry. It must be replaced occasionally due to evaporation. Viscosity can be measured using a viscosity cup and one of two methods. Through the hole and one inch below. 
To ensure consistent measurements in your facility, be sure that all operators perform viscosity testing using the same method. Suspend a slurry materials only require simple viscosity control. Using the number 5 cup, the recommended target viscosity range for suspend a slurry FS material is 12 to 13 seconds, and suspend a slurry ZR material is 8 to 10 seconds. Please note, recommended target viscosity ranges are approximately 1 second shorter when measuring viscosity through the hole. If your viscosity test results are higher than the target range, this indicates that there is not enough water in the slurry. Simply add water. If results are lower than the target range, potential causes could include either refractory settling or too much water in the slurry. Either remix the slurry or allow the excess water to evaporate. When needed, control the viscosity of suspended slurry materials with water adjustments only. As the viscosity increases, add water to bring the slurry back into the target viscosity range. Be sure to use distilled or deionized water, as tap water can contain contaminants that may negatively affect slurry life. Mix the water in completely to ensure a uniform blend and to get the slurry viscosity back into target range. Total solids testing is required to determine the refractory solids percentage. Uncontrolled refractory solids can lead to weak or brittle shells. Record the weight of a small aluminum pan. Add a sample of wet slurry and re-record the weight of the pan. Dry the sample at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. A standard toaster oven can be used. Once dry, re-record the pan weight and calculate the total solids. The recommended target total solids range for suspend a slurry FS material is 70 to 72 percent and suspend a slurry ZR material is 79 to 81 percent. If your target solids test results are higher than the target range, this indicates that there is not enough water in the slurry. Simply add water. If results are lower than the target range, potential causes could include either refractory settling or too much water in the slurry. Either remix the slurry or allow the excess water to evaporate. If you have any concerns about the health of your suspended slurry materials, send r and a 1-liter sample in a clean, dry, sealed container for evaluation. Safety OSHA-approved respiratory protection should always be worn to avoid inhalation of respirable silica dust, which can result in silicosis and irreversible lung disease. Such exposure includes shell building, casting, knockout and cleanup. Refer to safety data sheet for specific details. Storage and handling. Always keep suspend a slurry materials sealed tightly when not in use to prevent evaporation. Suspend a slurry materials will gel after use if not recovered. Once per month, whether dipping parts or not, open the container, gently remix and reseal the container lid. Keep from freezing. Suspend a slurry materials must be maintained above 35 degrees Fahrenheit to prevent the material from precipitating irreversibly and making the product unsuitable for use. Shelf life is one year from the date located in the lot number on the label. The first six digits of the lot number represent the month, day, and year of manufacture. Be sure to rotate stock to maximize shelf life. Ransom and Randolph Investing with Innovation